Um, on to our speaker for the evening. Um, we have a chap called Alex Dobre. Um, I'll let him introduce himself because um, there's, there's loads and loads of history and he's got some great stuff to tell you, talk to you about. His talk tonight is called Bridging the Gap, um, how to talk to developers if you're not a technical person. So a round of applause for Alex. Right. So I'm Alex and day to day I deal with the gap. I don't know if uh, you've tried to talk to developers lately, or if you're developers, if you try to talk to business people lately. There seem to be two independent camps that don't much like or trust or enjoy spending time with one another. And it seems that there is a gap between the two, and that on the one side, the gap has to be skill-wise, they know different things, and also emotional. Weird thing to talk about at a technical meeting, but I will breach the subject. So, I only have seven slides for you today. I'm gonna go through them relatively quickly if I can. So, potentially a few minutes of questions from you, the audience, afterwards. Now, let's first begin with, uh, in true technical fashion, with the problem. Let's suppose, for the sake of argument, that you, the entrepreneur, want to take what is inside your imagination, somehow translate it into a real-world application that is visionary, exciting, magnificent. Um, and it turns out this is the key issue that the entire software development industry struggles with. Whether you're big, and sm big or small, you struggle with this simple fact. It's very difficult to get what is inside your imagination through different people's brains to make it reality, especially if your imagination is a bit fuzzy on the details. Uh, let's, let's begin, before we d uh, dive into how we could do it, uh, Starter, startups could do it, how do the big boys do it? If you're IBM or Accenture, what, what approach do you take to develop software? Well, usually what happens, in my experience at least, is that there is a process involved. Simplified, it looks something like this. It begins with business analysts that sort of write in plain language the rules that the application has to work on. Then it goes to functional analysts that they uh, dive deeper. And then it goes to architecture, which is how the code looks like, how is it structured, what tools to use, what software tools to use, and how. Then developers in teams with a team leader to write code. Of course, there's testing, there is releasing the code, regularly, and environment, where are you gonna host that code? There are actually, in reality, much more items, and in your average project, you're gonna have a person or a team of people in each one of those uh, bubbles. And the roles are there. You have a business analyst all the way to environment manager. Plenty of people involved. Um, you can already see that if you're a entrepreneur, you have a brilliant idea about an app, and you're looking for a developer, and you have very little techno uh, technological skills, in reality, you're not looking for a developer, you're looking for all-in-one. You're looking for somebody to translate your idea to functional requirements, to decide which, uh, how the code would look like and what sort of technologies to use, to decide how it's gonna be released, tested, and deployed. All of those things. You're looking for a, quite an exceptional, exceptional individual. If you're a developer and you're able to do all-in-one, you are potentially very expensive, you do very well for yourself. If you're an entrepreneur and you want a developer-ish developer to do, to do that for you, it makes sense to try to bridge a bit of that gap. More, more than that, on that in a second. How do we begin to bridge this gap? Let's say you are an entrepreneur and let's say you have very few pieces of technical, uh, technical knowledge. Number one tip. Human language is not sufficient to define your idea. Paint a picture and write stories on top of it. What you have here is a screenshot of uh, a sketch, a wireframe that I did on Pidoco for one of my web applications. Uh, you can use AxShare, you can use Pidoco, you can use Gliffy, you can use pen and paper, but please, Try to imagine how your application will look like, whether on a mobile for, for phone or on a web browser, and write a sketch, and write stories on this sketch, how a user may use your website. 
Second tip, learn the basics and build trust. Whenever I speak to my clients, they are very quick to point out the following phrase, I am not a technical person. Yeah, so that I know who I'm dealing with. I don't know what your mumbo jumbo code is, just I'm not a technical person, translate it for me. Imagine if you're going to a doctor, and two minutes into the conversation, you speak to the doctor, you know doctor, I'm not a doctor person. But the doctor comes back to you and says, well, yeah, but you do understand that your heart is in the left side of your chest and it pumps, pumps blood, yeah? The same thing with software development. There is an emotional gap here. People tend to be uh, reticent in uh, just getting to grips with the basics. Just as you know that this is a, uh, a thigh bone, or rather a femur, you can know a few basic things about software development and it helps tremendously to bridge this gap of, uh, of trust between developers and uh, entrepreneurs. And it goes both ways as well. If you're an entrepreneur and you've tried to hide, uh, hire a developer, you're probably frustrated in speaking to that developer because it's plainly obvious to you after a while that they don't really care or, know, or care to know anything about your business. Uh, and therefore, it's, they simply don't work with the same set of rules. And for them, they may mistrust you because it's clear to them that you don't know anything about technology. So therefore, you're not really seeing eye to eye. If you're a developer, it makes sense to learn more about the business. If you're a business person, it makes sense to learn the basics about software development. Um, tip number three, I would, I would say, prepare for rap rapid iteration and help with the burden. What does rapid iteration mean? Uh, remember how it's actually very difficult to get your idea into, uh, into reality? Well, one of the reasons is that it's fuzzy along the lines. That um, information needs to flow both ways. You tell the developers what, uh, what you need them to do, but you also need to be very flexible and listen very carefully to what they tell you iteration and do it rapidly. If you remember the uh, sl uh, a few slides ago, the big companies, how they do it with so many teams, for them iteration is remarkably difficult because if you want to get information from the customer for the, for, to the business analyst, to the functional analyst, to the developer, and all the way back to the customer and back and forth, the more people you have in that chain, the more difficult iteration is. If you're a, uh, a startup, you can be so much faster, so much more efficient. In my entire technical career, working for some of the biggest names in the industry, I can tell you without exception, there's a huge wastage of time, resources, and money simply because they're big and because it's very difficult to iterate. And there's another reason why they waste a lot of time and money. But before we get to, their, get to that reason, a very uh, fast tip, tip what, are, what are the few things that are, I would consider as part of the basics that you would want to learn? Learn the Agile Manifesto. It is a very wise piece of information, very quick and concise. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Responding to change over following a plan. These, this manifesto has been, in a sense, become so popular, Agile Software Development, because it encapsulates a, a key problem with development. It's different from many other uh, industries, and it needs to be iterative. It needs to evolve as it's being built. And finally, the most important tip I would like to give you this evening, and if you, is, I would consider this your major advantage to big players, which is inspiration. Coding is creative work. And for creative work, we care about autonomy, mastery, and purpose. We want, as developers, to have influence over what it is that we're building. We want mastery to get better at something that matters. And we want purpose. We want to find meaning in our work. What is the difference between the Google search engine and the Bing search engine? If you've used them both, you know what the differences are. And 
I can tell you that the key difference is that Google manages to inspire its engineers, manages to engage them. And no money, no amount of money in the world can match that inspiration. Coding is creative work. If you manage to inspire your developers, nobody can stand in your way with regards to efficiency. It is the, literally the difference between Google, the most powerful and popular search engine in the world, and Bing, a crappy search engine. I can um, recommend a couple of TED Talks. <laughs> it's not that Microsoft didn't have the money, and it's not the only example. There's a slew of examples out there. I can recommend a couple of TED Talks that hopefully will uh, turn upside down what you think you know about motivation inside business. There's a mismatch between what science knows with regards to mastery and purpose and what uh, business does. Dan Pink, The Puzzle of Motivation, Dan Irely, What Makes Us Feel Good About Our Work. That's about it then. Hopefully I was under 15 minutes, you let me know. This is me. If you're curious about who I am and uh, what I've been up to, you can find me on LinkedIn or email me.